So what is an arrhythmia? Arrhythmia is an electrical in disturbance in our electrical circuit of the heart. Either the normal heartbeat is slow, normal heartbeat is too fast, there are extra electrical focuses in the upper or the lower chambers of the heart, and that can lead to problems. When you have this AFib, and I guess a lot of you know what that is, you just lose your breath. You, just, you can't breathe, and you get kind of desperate. And when you can sit down or walk across the room and take a big deep breath while you're walking, it's great. It's really, really great. And I'm really appreciating Dr. Gandhi and what he knows and what he can do. And then what are your options? You've got three options. One is medications. We have got tons of medication. Every year we new, discover new medications. We try to implement new medications. Those are a lot of things that you want to consider when it comes to medications. Sometimes that might be the right choice. Sometimes it might not be the right choice, or it might be one of the choices that you want. And what is the next choice in ablation? That's a part of electrophysiology study in ablation where we try to fix the rhythm problem. And we'll talk about it. We use radio frequency that heats up the tissue or we use something which cools down your tissue. The newer system that we used on Bruce, that was pretty phenomenal. So till now we used to heat up the tissue, and by heating up the tissue we can fix the problem. It causes sometimes pain. It's pinpoint, we have to go block, 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 means every point, every point of this problem we have to go point by point by point by point. And sometimes we miss a point and that becomes an inaccurate procedure because that missed point might be the only point that was the problem. So we said we should have a balloon that goes in there and fix the whole problem at one single time. This balloon gets inflated inside the heart and it destroys every single uh, pulmonary vein connections that leads to the atrial fibrillation by freezing the tissue by minus 60, minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And that lead can complete the destruction of the problem and we started doing this a couple of months ago once the FDA in the United States approved. I mean, this was being done in Europe for the last five years, but now we are very much comfortable saying this is the state-of-the-art technology which can really help a lot of people like Bruce who can be alleviated of their symptoms completely, or if not completely, definitely partially with help of medications, and much more safer, much more accurate, and less chances of recurrence. What pushed me to the edge was my son's sports, football games. In one senior year, it kicked out on me three times. As Dr. Gandhi uh, gets my wonderful phone calls, uh, he, he knows. But, and it would always happen at a away game, and it was always happening when the track, and you have to walk 12 miles to get to the small stadiums, and you're up on the aluminum stands, it would kick out. Um, after about the third routine of that, uh, Dr. Gandhi said, uh, I had gone to a different uh, cardiologist in the group, and finally he said, look, we've, same, same story. We brought Dr. Gandhi on. It's time for you to, to really meet him. And so my last uh, five or six episodes, Dr. Gandhi was involved, and finally he recommended, um, he said, you need to have this done. You can't, you can't live your life this way. The procedure itself couldn't have taken... 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I, know the, I know the mapping took a long time, but the actual procedure itself was not that long. Uh, I went back in recovery for a, cert, for a short period of time, went up to my room, spent the night, and the next morning uh, I was good to go, and by the next afternoon I was on the phone with customers. Um, and I haven't, that was a year ago, October, and I've not had a, one incident since. I'm back to lifting, playing basketball, when I want to play basketball. And that has to do with uh, surgical ablation using other kinds of technology. And there are basically three options that we have. That is a standalone operation where we're just going in for atrial fibrillation through an open chest procedure, what we call concomitant uh, ablation, where we're doing it secondary to a coronary artery bypass graft and or a heart valve operation. Um, and then there's so-called minimally invasive surgery. We'll talk a little bit about this minimally invasive surgical ablation because it's kind of a hot item. And that is where we do uh, operative approaches through either side of the chest, right and left side, using video thoracoscopy on a beating heart. And basically, we try to 
uh, use this procedure in very specific patient uh, circumstances. Usually it's a patient who has failed some other sort of therapy. And usually it's a patient who has intermittent or paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. That is, sometimes the rhythm is normal, and sometimes it's not. Okay? Because in those patients, you have the highest degree of success. Often we find that uh, hybrid or a combination of therapies is required for any patient uh, to try to achieve long-term success.